welcome back. Time to write the code that will execute our commands inside of our payload. So as I already mentioned, for this we're going to need an additional library. So go to your backdoor program and import sub process. This library will allow us to execute any command that the server sends. Let's go down here where we added a comment for the command execution. We can delete it right now and to execute the command we can do something like this. We can initiate execute and we're going to equal that to the sub process dot be open and this stands for process open. This process open takes a few parameters and the first one will be what we want to execute. In our case we want to execute our command. The second parameter we can select to be shell equals true. And there are some additional parameters such as std out equals sub process dot pipe. And make sure that you type this pipe in the capital letters. Another parameter std error equals sub process dot pipe. And the last one will be std in equals sub process dot pipe. These are all the parameters that we need to specify right here. The most important one is that you specify this command as a first argument. Once we initiate the process open onto the execute, we can create a variable called result that will be equal to execute stdout.read. So we want to read the output. We're also going to concat to this the execute stdr.read. So these are the two things that will give us an output of the command. Then we will store them inside of the result variable and this line that I'm going to write right now could be a little bit tricky. Let me write it first, result.decode. You might be wondering why are we decoding this? Well, if I go up here, in the reliable send, we're going to encode our data and this result is something that we're going to send in the next line. And once we perform these two lines, we already get an encoded data. So if we don't decode it first and we try to send it straight away, it will throw us an error. It will not be able to do that because it is going to try to encode an encoded data. That's why first we must decode it right here and then in the next line we're going to type reliable underscore send and we're going to send our result. Great, now that we did this, let us test our program. And to test this program, you're going to need a Windows environment to compile it, and you're going to need any version of Python 3. Now, in my case, I'm using Python 3.7. So I would advise you to use the same version, so just download the Python 3.7, because if it works for me, it will most likely work for you. After you do that, what we must do is we must copy our backdoor to our Windows 10 machine. Why? Well, we're going to compile it on a Windows machine. For this, you can use a Windows virtual machine if you'd like. Just make sure you download Python 3.7 onto that Windows virtual machine. Once you do that, you can copy the backdoor. I am first going to copy to my Cal Linux desktop. So home is the hacker and the desktop. And from the desktop, I'm going to copy it onto the Windows 10 desktop. Great. Now that we copied it, we're going to need a few things in order to compile this program. So first of all, open your command prompt on your Windows machine, navigate to the directory where your backdoor is, and to compile this program, we're going to need a py installer library. You can install that library using pip, as usual. Once you get the py installer library, you want to go to the directory where your backdoor is and type py installer then the name of the program, in my case backdoor.py, and we're going to use two different arguments. One of them is one file, and the other one is no console. Once you specify all of this, press enter, and this will compile our Python program for us. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you must have all the libraries from this program installed using pip in order for the compiling of the program to be successful. So in this case, our backdoor right here, if I edit it using notepad, 
we only have these three libraries and all of them are already by default in Python. So there is no libraries that we must install yet. But in future, if you keep adding onto this program and you add additional libraries that might not be by default installed in Python, you will need to install them first using pip and then you can compile the program successfully. Okay, great. Now that we compile the program, we're going to have these four folders. We're going to have the dist folder, this pycache folder, this backdoor.spec file and the build folder. These three right here, you can delete straight away. We don't need them. And this dist folder will have our executable. Here it is. It is called backdoor.txe. And you know what is the cool part? If I scan it using the latest version of Windows Defender, Here it is, zero threats found. So we created an undetectable backdoor that we coded. Amazing, right? Now to test it to see whether it works. First thing that we must make sure is that the IP addresses and the ports are set correctly. And that is something that we should have done before actually compiling the program. But in my case, I remember that I set the 192.168.1.12 to be the IP address of Kali Linux machine and the port 5555 to be the port to connect to which is in my case correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Python 3 to start my server. It will print out listening for the incoming connections. And if I go right here, execute the backdoor.txe, nothing seems to be happening, but that is good. We don't want our program to open anything. But if we go back to here and we wait a couple of seconds, because remember that we set time.sleep command to be 20 seconds before actually connecting to our Kalinux machine. And after 20 seconds, here it is. We get the shell from our Windows 10 machine. We get shell written and then the IP address as well as the port from which the connection is coming from. Now, if I try to execute some of the command prompt commands, such as for example, who am I? It seems to be stuck. So there is something wrong with our code. Let us go and check our server first to see whether everything is good. So we got our reliable send and reliable receive functions. Everything seems to be good. But right here, we reliable receive the result and then we print it out. So this could be the problem. Let's check it out inside of our backdoor code as well, just to make sure that everything is good here. And after a few minutes of searching, I managed to find the error. So the error was inside of the backdoor code. The first thing that I didn't do is I didn't import this JSON library inside of my backdoor code. I only copied these two functions from the server code, but I forgot to import the JSON library. So that is the first thing that we must do. I already did it right here. And the second thing is the typo right here in this line. We typed R stip and it should be R strip. We need to fix that both here and inside of the server code. So go down here and change the R stip into R and then strip. Save right here as well. And we're going to copy the backdoor.py to the home Mr. Hacker and then desktop. So we're going to recompile it once again. All of these things we do not need anymore. So I'm going to delete them. If it tells you right this, that the file is currently in use, that is because we ran it. And to close it, we can go to task manager, find the backdoor.txe that is running and close it inside of our task manager. Then we should be able to delete the dist folder. Great. Now that we did that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again, copy the backdoor dot py onto my desktop and I'm going to compile it once again using the command prompt. So py installer backdoor.py dash dash one file and dash dash no console. Press enter. While this is compiling, let us go to our Kali Linux machine and let us start our server. Python 3 server.py it will listen for the incoming connections and right here we can go to the this directory and execute backdoor.txe. Once again, these other files we do not need, so you can delete them. 
only leave this directory with the backdoor.exe. And in just a few seconds, we should receive the connection right here in our Cal Linux machine, due to the timeout of 20 seconds that we coded inside of our program. And if I type who am I right now, it works. I can execute commands on the target machine. If I type dir, it will tell me that the only file in the directory is backdoor.exe, and that is because we are currently inside of this dist directory. If I type ipconfig, it will tell me my IP address. I can type the netstat command to get the netstat output, where it will tell me all of my current connections on that target machine. But if I, for example, try to go one step back, this will not work. I will still be in the dist directory. So it seems that our program works, we can execute the commands, but for now on, we can't seem to change the directories into a different directory. And that is something that we must see how to fix in the next video. But for now on, it is good that it works. We saw how we can compile the program to exe using PyInstaller. So once again, just install Python 3.7 on a Windows machine, install PyInstaller for the Python, and install all the libraries that you're using inside of your program. In our case, we are not using any additional libraries outside of the standard Python libraries, so we didn't need to do that. Only thing we needed to do is to install PyInstaller and then use the command PyInstaller, program name, one file, and no console as options. And this should compile the program for you. Once you execute it, it should connect to the server that we are running from our Cal Linux machine. And let us test the quit command. If I press enter, it closes the program right here in our terminal. But does it also close the program in task manager? Let us check it out. And it indeed does. So we also close the program on the target machine with the quit command. Great. In the next video, we're going to see how we can successfully change directories using our program.